So, can I have a volunteer? Zach? Okay. I want you to take this pen. Let's see. Let's just really make sure it marks, okay? Not so much. And we'll do this pen. Yeah, maybe it's just <coughs> Is it yours? I put stuff in. Oh, okay. Okay, all right. I want you to stand right here. Okay, let me move your drink just in yeah. case. And I want you to hold this pen without moving on any single point on that paper, but you can just use one hand. One hand? Yes. So whichever hand you're better at. Make sure it doesn't, doesn't uh, move on the paper. No, I mean push oh, it down on it. Down. Yeah. Okay. Now take the right hand off. Yeah. While leaning forward, you can't lean on the guy. <laughs> okay. Now, don't move that pen from that location, okay? All right. Till the end of this one. <laughs> okay. See, uh, you see how you move it off the thing? Okay. <laughs> That's what anger does. It causes us to fall short of the mark. See, life is difficult. It's like leaning over like this. But what anger does is it makes it more difficult. And bitterness too, but that's a discussion for another day. Um, stay there. Okay. All right. So that takes us to the actual discussion portion. Is God's wrath the same as man's anger? No? Why do you say no? Man's anger is on a different uh, perspective. Than okay, different perspective. Okay. Is that, I heard somebody else say something. What? I was just going to say. Um, well, man's anger is usually rooted in pride or selfishness. Okay. And God's anger is usually uh, rooted in um, justice. Okay. All right. Okay. Anybody else want to add anything? You guys are good. You're on top of this, and you're the quiet one. <laughs> Watch out, everyone. If, you, if who knows, maybe Ben might say something tonight too. Whoa! <laughs> Unlikely. <laughs> so, let's turn to Romans 12. If you would like, if you would not like, well then fine. Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, verse 17. Oh, this is the main part. Unless you still want to follow. Yeah, I can still follow. <laughs> do, you need a, do you need a Bible, Zach? Oh, no. Okay. All right. So Romans chapter 12, verse 17 says, Do not repay evil, I'm sorry, do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not overcome. Um, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. So, there, there's a few different things, and I think that Zach and and and, and Gracie really started out as on the right thing there. Um, God's anger is not based on temporary feelings. You have to you have to remember when we get tired. For those of you who have kids. When we get tired, what happens? We start being really short to our kids, right? God's never tired, see? And so when he's angry, okay, it's different than when we're angry. When we're angry, it's because in this moment we're irritated or whatever, and so we react, right? When God is angry, it's because there is a sin, which remember, God hates sin. He never hates people, but he always hates sin because it's against his character. It's against himself. Okay? So when God gets angry, it's because that sin can no longer be tolerated. Does that make sense? 
that's how that's how we balance the fact of God loves people and yet the rapture and the tribulation and that stuff is still going to happen even though he loves people and there's going to be that final thing because that love demands his, his, his justice which also involves his anger too God the wrath of God um, so God we also see that God doesn't have enough oh I've just had enough of this and so I'm gonna you know smite these people that's not how God works okay um, so God's anger is justified because it is righteous and divine. Okay, He alone is good. Our anger is not ju justified because we are not we are not um, righteous and divine. Does that make sense? Okay. So I really think that the, the Gracie and Zach really just nailed that one. Um, didn't Jesus get angry? Yes. Yes. When? In the, temple. in the temple? Okay. When he, when he turned the table over. Okay. Can you guys give me a reference of where it says that he was angry? You told us not to use the New Testament, so I didn't look in the Okay. Testament. All right. Are, is anyone positive that it says Jesus got angry? Well, it doesn't say he got angry. Okay. It just says he turned the table. Okay. It does, and the Old so Testament. Is, so what is it with the, the Israel people? He said, "Yeah, he got angry, and and then he, uh, he, because he, um, 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 I'm not exactly specific. I don't know specifically where, but somebody, please." You didn't look up your Old Testament your passage? No. Shame on you! Did anybody look up an old? Oh, good. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Right? Good. Okay, let's go to Nicole since since she went to the trouble of getting us the first. I just, I actually found a random one, but I really like it. Okay. It's from Proverbs 29:11. Okay. It says, "A fool gives forfeit to his anger, but a wise man keeps himself under control." Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. We're act actually that one's on the thing for later. That very good, very good. Did anybody else have a verse that they had done from last week? Well, Nicole, kudos to you. I did, but it's, it's not God getting angry. Okay, that's fine. That's I fine. I Old Testament. Yeah. Um. Uh, Samuel, Second Samuel, chapter twelve, where the prophet is talking to David, and David gets angry. Second Samuel, chapter twelve, where the prophet's talking to Samuel. To David. To David. About. Um, oh, the sin with Bathsheba. <sighs> okay. All right. And David gets angry, but it doesn't say he sinned. Okay. By becoming angry. Okay. So, mm -hmm. does anybody know what he's talking about? Mm -hmm. David has sex with one of his best soldier's wife's right. wife. Mm -hmm. He only had one wife. Um, and then he has him killed. Mm -hmm. And then a prophet comes to him and tells him this story about this, this rich man taking this poor man's sheep. And he gets all outraged. Mm-hmm. Pride, table of one, pride. Pride. <laughs> See what I mean? He, the sin had actually blinded him, blinded him to the to what to what the actual issue that he didn't even see this thing that. Um. Okay. So and then he gets angry and what is the what what does he say in his in his anger? Does anybody know besides besides Chuck? What does he say in his moment of anger? That the man should be executed. That the man should die. Yeah. And then what does the prophet say? You. It was you. See, the anger didn't produce anything good, did it? No. Thank you for bringing that one up. That's a good one. So let's look at Jesus um, becoming angry. We're not going to look at Matthew 21, 12, because it's the exact same, not the exact, pretty much the exact same thing as Mark 11. Uh, and then we'll look at uh, John. Mark 11? Yeah, Mark 11, uh, 15 through 17. <clears throat> On reaching Jerusalem, Jesus entered the temple courts and began driving out those who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves, and would not allow anyone to carry merchandise to the temple courts. And as he taught them, he said, "It is not written, my house. I'm sorry. It is. Yeah, it is not. Is it not written? <laughs> Gee, goodness <laughs> sakes! My house will be called a house of prayers for all nations, but you have made it a den of robbers." And then through, uh, oh, actually, that's where I want to stop right there. 
and then oh no i'm sorry then 27 to 30 they arrived again in jerusalem and while jesus was walking in the temple courts the chief priests the teachers of the law and the elders came to him by what authority are you doing these things in other words what gives you the right to drive these people out of the temple they asked, and, what and who gave you authority to do this? Jesus replied, I will ask you one question. Answer me, and I will tell you by what authority I am doing these things. John's baptism, was it from heaven or of human origin? Tell me. They discussed it among themselves and said, if we say from heaven, he will say, then why didn't you believe him? But if we say of human origin, they feared the people, for everyone held that John really was a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we don't know. Jesus said, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. And in case you didn't get what he was saying, we'll read it in John, because John makes it a little bit more blunt as to what Jesus is saying here. John uh, 2. This is really good. Really good. Jesus had these way of, ways of think, saying things. I was like, oh, you sly dog. Uh, John chapter 2, verse 13 through 19. When it was almost time for the Jewish Passover, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple courts, he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and others sitting at tables exchanging um, money. So he made a whip out of cords and drove all from the temple courts, both sheep and cattle. He scattered the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. To those who sold doves, he said, Get these out of here. Stop turning my father's house into a market. His disciples remember that it is written, Zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then responded to him, What sign can you show us to prove your authority to do all this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and I will raise it again in three days. Do you guys get what he's saying? Who, who thinks they know what he's saying, what the Jesus body, is the saying? Body of Christ. <coughs> I'm sorry? The body of Christ. Right, but how does that how does that apply to his authority to to cast them out of the temple? Even, even oh, to cast them out. Because mm -hmm. they said, by what authority are you doing this? And he said, tear this down, I'll raise it up in three days. What does that have to do with anything? It's his temple. It's his body, not not the actual the temple he's talking about. Okay. Okay. What were you gonna say? Um. Well, he's saying he has authority because he's God. Yes. 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 When they when they asked Jesus. Who gives you authority to do this thing? His answer was very simple. I'm God. God can cast whoever he wants. See what I mean? That's what he's saying here. I have the authority to do this because I'm God. So, does this story give us authority to get angry? No. Because his appeal for why he had the authority to do this thing was because he was Jesus. He didn't say because I'm righteous or because it's wrong. He said because I'm God. Mm -hmm. See what I mean? So, that's important to know. So, um, also, it doesn't say in any of these events that Jesus got angry. That's actually an important detail, because Jesus wasn't throwing a baby fit. That's important to note. Okay, We get angry at things, and we take our anger out on people. That's what we do. Jesus did not do that. Remember, if Jesus is God, everything that he does is good, and he never sinned. Right? Okay. So, the word that only John uses is zeal. Now, the word zeal is used for both positive and negative things. And only context tells you what it is. But as, J as John goes to great lengths to show us that Jesus is sinless and is in fact God, we can assume he means it in the positive sense. Okay? So, um, once again, it's not anger. It's more of um, a passion for. Okay? So he was passionate for – what was the, what was the reason of the temple? George. To worship God. To, to have people who are separate from God have an encounter with God. That was the reason. He was angry because they had turned it into something that was all about a market, all about money. See, I mean, it wasn't about reconciling people to God anymore. And that, and, and he, once again, Jesus had divine um, uh, authority over that. Um, so this was based on who he was, not based on uh, angry or temper trip. On, Temper tantrum. Also about the whip, this is important to note, it's probably not a whip like you're thinking of. You know, we have like those cattle whips and stuff. It probably wasn't like that because it says he formed out of the stuff that was there. So it was probably more of a loose bind, more of making a loud noise, probably didn't hurt, and probably didn't hurt to be hit with it. Um, probably. Not definitely, but probably. Also, um, the Greek wording there is very hard to get. It sounds like he's actually saying that he hit the animals and not the people. Okay, that should be noted. And it should be also be noted that John is the only one who mentions that as well. 
So we shouldn't assume just going out, oh, so Jesus beat people with a whip. No, 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 no. We shouldn't assume that. And there's really nothing in the context to make us assume that either, especially when you read the people's reaction. Okay, um, I think that they would have responded a little bit differently if he would have actually been striking them. And also that would have been probably a bad thing to do. Um, so don't don't also for, don't also uh, forget that the law was on Jesus' side about this, um, okay? And he didn't actually hurt anybody or anything. He didn't break anything, okay? It says he turned over the tables, but it didn't say he broke anything, okay? That's also important to note as well. Jesus didn't throw a temper tantrum. I think that's increasingly important to important to note. Um, but doesn't the Bible say to be angry? Sure. Unless it's translated wrong. Is it translated wrong? Well, yeah, I want you guys' – what you guys have to say about this. Okay, yes, well, Serena, go for it. Um, I, I had a Bible verse. <gasps> tell me, tell me. And it was in Ecclesiastes 7, 9, and it says, Ooh. Do not be quickly provoked in your spirit, yes. for anger resides in the lap of fools. And I think what this means is, like we were talking about earlier, is – we quickly get angry, mm -hmm. and the Bible says God is slow to anger. Mm -hmm. I think we have to be wise about our anger. Ah, I have that one written down here in a little bit. Oh, good job. Good job. So about this, but doesn't the Bible say to be angry? No. You say no. Why do you say no? Because. Can you think of anything specific? Bible teaches not to be angry, to have a different, to be slow to anger, and to think before you. Hmm. Okay. All right. There, there was a hand. Lauren, go ahead. What Psalm, did you say? Psalm four four. Be angry and do not sin. Yes. Ponder in your hearts. Um, I didn't write the whole thing down. And then be steadfast. Let's see. Ponder in your hearts <coughs> on your bed. And it's just, okay. We'll come to it yeah, later. Be steadfast to worship God. Um, it's not saying that you can't get angry because we are going to get angry about things, but it's saying, think about your anger. What is the motive behind your anger? Mm -hmm. Are you angry because God's not being exalted or mm -hmm. are you angry because you're not being exalted? I think that that, I think that that is, is um, I don't agree with your conclusion, but I think what you said is spot on. Spot on. Say that last. Say that last part again. Okay. Are you angry because God's not being exalted? Or are you angry because, because you're not being yeah. exalted? You. We try to justify ourselves yeah. through our anger. Do, do you guys understand and what she's saying? What she's saying? Yeah. Our anger. Let's be honest. Ninety-nine point ninety-nine point nine 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 nine. However many times you want to go down the list is based on Mostly, us. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we get angry at our kids, at our spouse, at our work, at our at our the government, at the. I mean, you yeah, name it. That's what we get angry at. Yeah. You know what I mean? What does that have to do with God? With the majority of the times, nothing. Yeah. Or we try and like manipulate the the thing where somehow. You know, there's this great injustice being done or some nonsense like that. And it's like, okay, let's step back for a second. And we realize, okay, no, that's actually not what's going on. Um, did anybody else have something to say? I really am liking your guys' answers. I know that you're going to hate this, but it's something that I truly believe. And you've talked about it before, and I disagree. Go for it. And I'm sorry. No, it's fine. Go, go. You have said before there's no such thing as righteous anger. Okay. And I disagree. Okay. Um, going back to the Old Testament, Moses, when he came down from the mountain, yes. he saw them worshiping the calf. Yeah. So he shattered. It says his anger burned hot inside uh -huh. him, and he threw down the tablets and uh -huh. shattered them. God did not rebuke him. But what happened was Moses went to God and says, what are we going to do with these people? God, please help mm -hmm. and have mercy. And what did God do? He drew him back up to the mountain and had him um, do the tablets. He was angry because God was not being exalted. A calf was being exalted. However, there's another side to that coin. Uh-oh. Because she's on a roll. On, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I am in Numbers, Numbers chapter twenty. It talks about <gasps> you. I have that one too. What? It talks about 
the striking of the rock. Uh -huh. Okay, this is the second time when the Israelites were complaining about no water. The first time God instructed Moses, strike the rock and water will come forth, and it did. The second time God said to Moses, speak to this rock and yeah. tell it to bring forth water. But Moses went back to the people, and they're still grumbling and complaining, and he got irritated. So what did he do? He struck the rock twice because he was angry, and he was disobedient, and he did what worked the first time. Huh. So there was righteous anger the first time with the tablets and human anger okay. with the rock. All right. Now, I want you guys to answer that. What, what do you guys have to say to that? You kept smiling, and so it encouraged me. <laughs> no, no, I love I this. This is what I wanted. <laughs> this is what I wanted. What do you guys have to say to that? Uh, I don't know. I, 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 I thought that was really good, I, I and I would yeah. have never made the connection between, you know, righteous anger and unrighteous anger that, one, he was angry and still um, in line with what God was doing, and then the other, he was just throwing a, a, a fit, a like she said, and yeah. just got mad. Mm -hmm. And and so he did not accomplish what God wanted him to do. When the first time he was angry, he still was accomplishing the work of God. The second time, he was not. Yeah. Okay, now let's stop there. Hold on. Do you guys have anything to say? Because you guys are getting kind of quiet on this part. Well, actually, I can, I can see the connection now that okay. Ashley... Uh, explain it. So you're changing your view on this yes. one? Okay. All right. Ben, you got anything? No? Okay. No? Check? There's one thing I wanted to Hold on, just a Check, you didn't have anything? Okay, go ahead. Okay, so the first time he was mad at them because they were exalting a calf over God. Mm -hmm. The sec And God knew his heart uh -huh. concerning that. The second time, when, right before he struck the rock... Um, he said to the people, shall we bring forth water from this rock? And he wasn't talking about God. He was talking about him and Aaron. So he put it all on himself. He was all self-righteous and prideful about it. Mm -hmm. So that was that might give you a clue about him. Okay. where that came from. This bothered me, so I kind of studied it. <laughs> good. No, no, that's good. That's good. <laughs> Anybody else have anything else? So let's look at some passages. All right. I'm really excited, you guys. Okay, Ephesians 4:26 uh, through 27 is is the one that most um, Christians um, um, refer to. Okay. Excuse me. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. Um, and do not give the devil a foothold. Um, this is taken from – Lauren already mentioned this, Psalm 4.4. Did you know that the original translation does not say um, this right here about um, – where is it? Where are you? Uh, in your anger, do not sin. Did you know that, you got, that did not, does not say that? He is quoting from the Septuagint version, which came out hundreds of years later, which was a Greek um, translation, um, which is – Less accurate, but it still gives us gives an, as an idea of what it is. Now, am I saying that what Paul is writing is not not inspired? No, I just want you guys to to know that about that. So, Paul was quoting the Septuagint. Yeah, or... he was quoting the Septuagint translation of Psalm four four. Oh, okay, not later translators. No. Okay. no, no, and then Psalm four four. So let's turn there. The wording, uh, the original wording, is a little bit different, and and. It kind of does matter because – well, we'll look at it in a second, but Psalm 4.4 4 says this. And this is the NIV, so it's going to be a little bit more um, – not literal, okay? <laughs> Tremble and do not sin. When you are on your bed, search your hearts and be silent. The context of Psalm 4 – let me tell you what, what's happening here. David is talking to immoral people, and he's telling them basically to be quiet for a little bit and pay attention to what's actually going on. Um, if you, it picks up in Psalm 4, 1. Answer me when I called you, my righteous God. And then he goes on to ver verse 2, and he says this. How long will you people turn my glory into shame? How long will you your, you love delusions and seek false gods? Know that the Lord has set apart his faithful servant for himself. The Lord hears when I called him. 
Tremble and do not sin. When you are on your bed, search your hearts and be silent. So he's basically calling them to, to hold off on their on their on what they're doing for a little bit. Just hold off for a minute. Offer the sacrifices of the righteous and trust in the Lord. Many, um, many, Lord, are asking, who will bring us prosperity? Let the light of your face shine on us. Fill my heart with joy when their grain and new wine abound. <clears throat> so Psalm 4.4 4 is actually, um, David is talking to wicked people, calling them to repentance. Okay, so how does this apply to Ephesians 4? I'm sorry, Ephesians, yeah, Ephesians 4. Right here, Galatians, Ephesians. Galatians 4. Um, because Paul is talking about, sorry, yeah, Galatians 4. Uh, I'm sorry, Ephesians, Ephesians 4. Um, Paul is talking about church conflict specifically and how to resolve it. Not life in general, okay? That that's needs to be noted, okay? Paul is talking about how to resolve a church conflict, okay? So, this is what Paul says. You go a little bit f uh, earlier, 30, 25. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor, for we are all members of one body. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry, and do not give the devil a foothold. Anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work, doing something useful with their own hands, so that they may have something to share with those in need. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth. See, he's going through these different things about church conflict, and you can read that for yourself. But um, <clears throat> So I'll, I'll, let's talk about the wording that, that's being used here. In, in English, it translate, translates like this. Be angry and do not sin. Mm -hmm. In Greek, it it's more like this. If you should become angry... Don't let this continue. Don't let this go to sin. If you should become angry, kill it before the devil gets a foothold. Mm -hmm. That's more of how it how it how it is in the Greek. Um, so what he's saying is, don't let ang anger become. Don't let anger progress. What is he? Why is he saying that? Because we're people. We get angry, don't we? But what he's saying is, when you do get angry, don't justify that anger. Don't let it build. Don't let it. Don't let it, it, it settle in your spirit because you're gonna fall. And you're gonna go to bad things. Look what he says. Um, and your anger do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you're still angry. What if you sin when it's already nighttime? See, that's not his point. He's not talking about a length of time. He's talking about don't let this thing progress. When you're angry, kill it before it gets going. Why? Do not give the devil a foothold. When we're angry, what happens in our spirit? We start justifying things, right? Well, I have a right to be angry. They wronged me, or they did this, or they did that, or, or this or that. Or, you know, we justify the anger. Don't let your anger control you. And pretty yes. much, yes. When yeah. you feel that rising up inside of you, kill it. Yeah. And one of the downsides of having translations, you know, is you kind of miss these little subtleties. Um, but I would like to note that this is the only part in the New Testament that says this. All the other parts warn against being, being angry, okay? So let's let's yeah. keep that in perspective. Um so basically, don't allow that to uh, to put something in your life. Um, here, here's the clicker, okay? The, the the big thing that most of the Bible translates. And I both agree and disagree with Lauren on, on what she was saying. I'll explain that later. Anger cannot possibly be by itself. Anger is never simply anger. In, in the minds of people, it never is simply anger. Anger always always comes with bitterness. You're angry with someone, bad thoughts, you're thinking something negative, or wrong actions. Okay. Now, we're going to look at this in a minute. But specifically the thing of, about Moses, I was going to say this before you said that. Okay, so I'm not just trying to argue with you about it. I actually had, in fact, you're going to see where I had it written down. Yeah. Um, the thing about Moses, the first time God made the tablets and he, you know, gave them to Moses, the second time he said, you go make some rocks and, oh, yeah, and we're going to write on them. See them. what I mean? Yeah. And I don't believe that God wanted him to throw those rocks on the ground. I could be wrong about that. But was he angry for a good reason? Yes, he was angry for a good reason. I don't think that that justified him throwing the rocks. No. However, once again, God's attention was not based on that. It, he was kind of focused on the whole people who were in danger of being destroyed completely, annihilated, out of existence. Mm -hmm. See what I mean? So I don't think that necessarily Moses necessarily sinned, but I am saying that when we get angry, 
if it doesn't come, if you aren't already experiencing bitterness, bad thoughts, wrong actions, you will if you allow that bitter and that anger to, to sit there for a minute or two. It doesn't take as long to do something stupid, just does it? Right. Just takes a second. I mean, honestly, just takes a minute. <laughs> it doesn't take that long. And how do I know this? Because I'm a person. I know what happens when I get angry. To, the, to date, I have never once gotten angry without negative side effects. Never once in my anger have I ever been angry and not sinned. Never once. If you guys have, God bless you. <laughs> I have not. Because when I get angry, I start thinking about the person who's irritating me. The situation's irritating me, or et cetera, et cetera. You go, go down the list. <gasps> that Lauren with her office and her computer and... And that Ben with his awesome new truck that I cried when I saw it. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's so big and powerful. <laughs> Can I drive it? <laughs> Sorry, I, I'm, I'm totally crushing on his new truck. <laughs> but anyways. Um, so that takes us to what does the Bible actually say about anger? Let's. Our first example is Genesis 4, 5-8. Add about the Genesis thing. Uh oh. Um, with Moses. You mean the Exodus thing? Yeah, yeah. Or Numbers. Yes. We know Exodus. 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 <laughs> yeah, Exodus. Um, it, it didn't really solve anything for Moses to throw down the tablets. No, that's true. Uh, you know, like, they were sinning against God and God took care of it, you know, later on. But Moses I see what you're didn't saying. Really settle with Moses getting mad at tablets. That's true. That that it is true. To a question that I've been pondering. That that is true. Nothing was yeah. solved. That that's a very good still point. Have to go back up and redo the whole process. Right. Right. Really the hard way. That that's actually yeah. a very good point that I completely missed. Is nothing good was accomplished in the anger. If nothing good's being accomplished, then then. See what I mean? And Pastor talks about this all the time. And that's actually one of the reasons why I decided to do this, because I've, I've argued with Pastor back and forth about this. I've said, no, people can't get angry. And he said, no, people can't get angry. And so I'm having to articulate an argument that I was actually against when I started, and I've actually, I act, I'm actually now on his side now that I've finished my study. <laughs> because I didn't just go to one or two verses. I went through the whole Bible. Mm -hmm. right. And when you go through the whole Bible, it kind of gives you an idea of it. And then you start realizing... If I am justified in getting angry in some certain circumstances, do I really want to try to find those one or two circumstances that may or may not happen in my entire life? Or do I want to focus on not letting the anger turn into something else and not risk harming someone? You people have had kids. You know. Sometimes you get so angry you just want to punch something, right? Uh -huh. And there's kids around. Uh -huh. <laughs> You see where I'm going with this? Yeah. Yeah. Anger could potentially lead you to doing something dumb. But anyways, I'm, I'm, dig I'm digressing very far. Let's go back to the actual topic that we were talking about. Genesis 4, 5 through 8. But on Cain and his offering, he did not look with favor. So Cain was very angry, and his face was downcast. downcast. Then the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door, desires to have you, but you must rule over it. Now Cain said to his brother Abel, let's go out to the field. While they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. So once again, we see the effects of anger untreated. It just builds and builds and builds and builds. You lose your effectiveness, you lose your focus, and even though God himself warned Cain, he was unable to combat it. Why? Because he just let the anger go. When you're tempted with anger, just just let it go. Even if you're justified, just let it go. Um, Psalm 38, 8 through 9. But once again, it is questionable whether it is possible to separate anger from the sin that goes with anger. It's questionable as to whether that is humanly possible. So, once again, we it, it may be wiser... To not look for the exception to the rule. Because I can't think of a good side effect of being angry. And I can't think of a single Bible passage that shows a good side effect of being angry. I have a question. Yes. And I honestly don't know if there's anything that will agree that backs this up. Uh huh. What about anger that motivates to right actions? And I'm not talking about... Can you give right, an example? Yeah. Um, it makes me angry 
to hear about 70 million babies being born. Mm. That angers me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm with you on and that I one. I don't yeah. let it take hold in bitterness, but I use that to motivate me to rather than staying angry, what can I do about it? Yeah. I can pray. I, I think can that's good. Support yeah. Support people who, you know, um, are going doing things about it financially or whatever, and I can tell my story. Mm -hmm. So, at the outset, yes, it makes me angry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But then I have a way of combating yeah. that. Yeah. And and with not bitterness or wrong motives. The thing that I would, um. The only thing that I would possibly caution against that is because I'm right with there with you. It, yeah. it, that sometimes I just have to think about something else or watch a funny <laughs> video to get my yeah. mind off of it. Yeah. Um, I can't watch the, the things that they put on TV or listen to on still to this. Yeah, it, it's yeah. very um, aggravating how unscientific pro abortion is. Sorry. It, it, yeah. well, okay, I anyways. Just about that. Um, <laughs> Is that no, yeah. anger? Is that righteous anger? Is that well, something else? This is why I warned against righteous anger is because by doing by being angry about that, I have become short with people. Oh. See what I mean? And yeah. so if I if I'm if someone's arguing for abortion, uh -huh. I talk to them in a very I talk down to them yeah. and I don't speak any love to them because I'm irritated by the situation already. Oh. If I would have taken that anger and went to prayer and left it there, which I have still to this day. I'm not condemning anyone else because I'm talking about me. I am very irritated about this. Um, it is very difficult to witness to someone who's doing something that you hate. Yeah. 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 It is. It, it is. is. Child molesters, um, rapists. Uh, you go down the list. Drug abusers, alcoholics, uh, abortionists. I mean, you go down the list of these different things, and it's very difficult to be so passionately on fire against something yeah. and still talk to the person who's for it with love. Yeah. It's very difficult to do that. If you can do that, I applaud you. I cannot. I, I, I have to, um, in fact, for instance, now I'm going to have to spend a good deal of tomorrow praying about this because I'm now so I'm so angry. irritated about it. Uh, no, it, it's something, see what I mean? It's something that's in me that irritates me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I wonder if it's an, an affect of my age and having had to deal with this so many years. So many years. Yeah. That I am tempered in it. No. You know, and Plus, I think that sometimes you have more clarity on that than I do sure. because of the different things, you know. Yeah. Um, and I don't think that that's a clarity that I will ever get because it's something that I could never get. Right. Does that make sense? Right. Um, and so I think sometimes experience can help us with those things. Yeah. Just as long as. Be on your guard yeah. is what I was I'm saying. You know what I mean? I'm not trying to justify righteousness. No, 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 no. I know. I get that. Yeah. yeah. I just it's one of those things that I've always wondered yeah. about. It's like, what is it? Yeah. You know, um, and so yeah, it's one of those things that may not have. A yeah, and and answer. and one more thing about righteous anger. Regardless of whether righteous anger does or does not exist, the only two places in the whole Bible that it comes from are the is the Exodus passage she mentioned with Moses and the Jesus passage, which we already talked was because his his, his thing is God. Okay. Yeah. Those are the only places in the Bible where that where we get that from. So let that have a bearing on whichever side of the argument you decide very, very to. Limited. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. So and, and Lauren, Lauren, who who once again is having the other view, still is is warranting the same thing that I said. Yes. Don't let that push you to sin. Yes. Okay. Oh, so whichever side of the argument you're on, there is that as a basis. Yeah. Okay. Don't go bombing abortion. <laughs> abortion with doctors. <laughs> yeah, I know people oh, sometimes get a little dark, don't they? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Psalm 38, <laughs> excuse me, 38, uh, 8 through 9 says, uh, yeah, yeah, Psalm 38, 8 through 9, um, I am feeble and utterly crushed, I groan in anguish um, of heart, all my long longings lie open before you, Lord, my sighing is not hidden from you, what does this have to do with that? <laughs> No, that's not what I was doing for. Maybe it's a translation. Psalm 38, 8-9. What translation do you have? I have NIV. What do you have? ESV. Yeah, do that one. He does say I groan because of the agitation of my heart. Irritation and that kind of 
What is what did what did you reading from? Me? Um, I oh, okay. Um, what am I reading from? <laughs> oh no! There's something I wrote down before I came. The NASB. NASB. Okay, and and read the whole thing. Eight through nine. I am benumbed and badly crushed. I groan because of the agitation of my heart. Lord, all my desire is before you, and my sighing is not coming from you. And the ESV. Um, I am feeble and crushed. I groan because of the tumult of my heart. Oh Lord, all my longing is before you. My sighing is not even coming. I don't remember sure what my. Mean one? No, because. Um, Just his anger, not God's anger. Yeah, I, that, I didn't really see that as applying to us at this moment. Um, there, there was something else I was going for. All that I can think of is. Let's play this off like I intended this. Okay. When we are in a place of that, <laughs> make sure to seek after the Lord with it. You know what I mean? Take that, and like Lauren was saying, take that that, that anger, that agitation, and go to the Lord with it. Uh, I don't know what I originally wrote that down for. I'm sorry. Proverbs 19.11, which um, you, Nicole, already read. Um <clears throat> A person's wisdom yields patience. It is one. I'm sorry. 29, 29, 29. Oh, I'm sorry. It is one's. I was saying this is not what she said, but this one. It, this one I did intend though. Yeah. Um, a person's wisdom yields patience. It is to one's glory to overlook an offense. A person's wisdom yields patience, mm -hmm. which is like the uh, the anti anger. Um. It is one's glory to overlook an offense. What do we do when we're angry, by the way? We yell at people, don't we? Mm -hmm. We you yeah. know, do all these different things. But what does he say here in this passage? A person's wisdom yields patience. It is to one's glory to overlook an offense. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but sometimes my nephews drive me up the wall. <laughs> I mean, I love them, okay? I love them. And you know what I'm talking about. Micah does this too. Micah does this too. But sometimes... Kids just have a way of just, just irritating. You know what yes. I mean? Like, yes, yes, yes. I mean, back me up on this. I, I'm yes. not just being mean. No, like, no, I love my kids. Yeah. I love Micah. But sometimes it just <laughs> drives me up the wall. It's like, please, can I have a moment of silence? <laughs> uh, yes, wait until there's two of them and they're older and you have to just send them to your room because you are about to throttle them. Okay, now see what I mean? Your room, mm -hmm. your Wisdom. life, maybe. Do, do you see what I mean? <laughs> okay, now, now take that. You guys who don't have kids, just try and imagine that feeling, okay? How difficult it is to keep yourself from sitting in that moment of anger. Especially if <laughs> today uh, I was at the doctor's office with Colt. Uh-oh, here it comes. <laughs> and he started playing with that paper. And making all that the little crackling sound in the background. Really, really, yes. I was trying to be so just let it go, let it go, and um. You know, when you're sitting there and your shoulder, you can feel your shoulder getting uh -huh. tenser and tenser until you like Scrooge or something. Yes. Um, twenty nine eleven says, um, <clears throat> fools give full vent to their rage, but the wise bring calm in the end. Mm -hmm. Bring calm in the end. Um. And was that the same one you read? Uh, it's the same verse, just I had a different translation. I don't know which translation it was. Read your translation. Uh, the translation I found was, A fool gives full bit to his anger, but a wise man keeps himself under control. Yeah. Keeps himself under control. Yeah. Um, Ecclesiastes 7.9, which Serena already, re already um, read. Um, where did you go, Ecclesiastes? Come back. Seven nine, um, do not be quickly provoked in your spirit, for anger resides in the lap of fools. Um, and then he talks in the verse right before that, patience is better than pride. Um, so, uh, Matthew five twenty two. Uh, but I tell you that anyone who is angry with a brother or sister will be subject to judgment. Again, anyone who says to a brother or sister, Raka, is answerable to the court. And anyone who says, you fool, will be in danger of the fire of a hell. 
and um, oh, we'll talk about that later. Uh, Galatians 5:19 through 21. Five nineteen through twenty one. Now I want you guys to listen to this. The acts of the flesh are obvious: sexual and sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage. He was just talking about about sexual sins and, and witchcraft, and then he hops down to um, uh, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissension, factions and envy, drunkenness, orgies and like. I warn you as I did before that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. So I would encourage you all to not um, justify too much anger. <laughs> Don't indulge in yeah. Um, Colossians 3 8. But now you must also rid yourselves of all such things as these anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Um, Hebrews 12 15. See to it that no one falls short of the grace of God and that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. Um, I, it's important to note that he doesn't really specify what the um, what the root is there because it can be many things. It can be bitterness. It can be anger. It can be jealousy. I mean, it can be many different things. But when it does sprout up, it will defile many, regardless of whether it's anger or bitterness or whatever. It will defile many. Um, when you are angry with someone... Or you're angry at something. Let's say you stub your toe and you take it out on someone else because you're angry. You, aren't, you weren't even angry at anybody, but then you end up taking it out on somebody. So then that person you take it out on um, is now now has a bad attitude towards you. So now you've led them to sin, and then they go and talk and talk bad about you to someone else. Many have been defiled by one simple simple thing. See what I mean? Don't let that root spring up and defile many. And when it does, be gracious, apologize, and move on. When we yell at our kids. Apologize, move on. When we yell at our spouse, apologize, move on. When we yell, apologize, move on. You know what I mean? Anger doesn't have to be the end of the matter. See, growing up, it was kind of like that. Um, a parent would get angry and do something really dumb, and then it was, they were justified because they were the parent. You, it doesn't have to be like that. It, it doesn't have to be like that. You know what I mean? If you get angry and mess up, apologize for your sin. You can still be the parent and do the right thing and, and still... You see what I mean? If we want our kids to be gracious and stuff, we need to show them that by doing it ourselves. You see what I mean? And it's, I'm not just talking about kids here. It also applies to coworkers and, and yeah. whatever, you know, because you don't have kids and you don't have kids, so I'm trying to make it more applicable. Um, yeah, James 1, 19 through 20. 1, 19 through 20. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry, because human anger does not produce the righteousness of God, that God desires. Human anger, regardless of whether it's justified or not, does not produce God's righteousness. I think that James said it pretty pretty simply, simply right there. So, hypothetically, can someone be angry so long as they don't sin an action, attitude, or word, or any other such way that, I, that is in between that I might, not, might be forgetting? Most positive examples um, are from God and not from people. There are a few examples that could potentially be positive, such as Exodus 11 8, which she already read, um, and 13, 32. Hmm. Actually, I'll go back to those. But hypothetically speaking, I'll, I'll, I'll read them anyways, just so that we're all on the same page. Hypothetically, it may be possible to be angry and not sin. Hypothetically. However, that's a very difficult thing to do, and as we just discussed, that anger is never going to result in a righteous in righteousness with you or with anyone else. See what I mean? And Moses' anger didn't result in righteousness. See what I mean? His yes. anger never resulted in righteousness. And there is not a single example in the Bible of someone's anger resulting in righteousness. And these are examples for us so that we won't justify our anger, but... Rectify it before it before it continues to grow. Just kill it before it, it's like a weed. You don't want weeds in your flower bed, do you? Nope. You don't want you don't want, you don't want someone pulling you down while you're already trying to hit the mark, do you? Yeah. It's already difficult. You don't need any more weight to 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 to, to, to add. Yeah. 
But hypothetically, is it is it humanly possible? It may there there's a slim chance that it might be. However, most positive examples are from God. Exodus eleven eight. <clears throat> Um, all these officials of yours will uh, did I say Exodus? Yeah. Will come to me bowing down before me and saying, Go, you and all the people who follow you. After that I will leave. Then Moses, hot with anger, left Pharaoh. He really told him what's what, but what was accomplished from it? Nothing. 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 See, he was angry because Pharaoh was being so stubborn against God, so his motives were pure, but nothing good was brought from it. And he left in, left in a rage. See what I mean? Um, 32 19. Um, and these are just kind of recording people getting getting angry, and the lack of any uh, that positive thing that resulted is not necessarily condemning it. Um, when Moses approached the camp and saw the calf and the dancing, this is the one you read. His anger burned, and he threw the tablets out of his hands, breaking them to pieces at the foot of the mountain. Um, and he took the calf the people had made and burned it in the fire. Then he ground it to powder, scattered it on the water, and made the Israelites drink it. That part I wanted to read just to ask this question. Why? I wonder if Moses just did it to screw with them. Because <laughs> it doesn't say that God told him to do that. He's just like, drink this. <laughs> I just thought it was funny. But anyways, um, are, we called to con are we called to convict or to love? To love. We're not called to convict. Okay? We should be discerning, and we should. We talked about this already a couple of times about Krishna judging. We already talked about that. However, we were not called to be the judge. There's a difference there. See what I mean? And a lot of anger results in either feeling like you deserve to be treated better than Jesus himself was, or feeling like it is your personal duty to judge those who are doing wrong. Mm -hmm. Both of which we are not called to do, but yet we feel like we do because, once again, self-righteousness and pride and that kind of stuff, um, which the Bible does warn about. So anger in us will eventually cause other sins, as, I, as that example, I think, showed pretty well. It's harder to do what's right when you are angry. It's already hard to do what's right, but when you're angry, it just gets a little bit harder. It's like the weights, me leaning against Zach. Um, never look for exceptions. Even in anger, do not justify your wickedness. For, for instance, um, I'm angry, so it's okay that I'm saying something bad about Nicole. See what I mean? So, and you don't look at me in that way because you know you guys do the same thing too. You know what I mean? You get angry and use it to justify something else. And then even when the person apologizes sometimes, we really grind it into the ground. Well, you still did this. It's like, see what I mean? So now we're not forgiving people either. Right. And what does God, Jesus say? If you don't forgive other people, I'm not going to forgive you either. See what I mean? So we need to remember that in context, okay? Um, anger itself may not be sin, but can anything good really truly come from it? So, um... Any 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 questions and, or comments? Thank you. Serena, go. Everybody look at Serena. No, well, you don't have to do that. Um, but <laughs> I guess my whole thing that, that I've always thought is, and, and going through this, you know, I, I, I do realize that nothing good comes from our anger. You know, like, we get angry and we hold grudges and we throw fists and... Like, really, we never have good intentions when we get angry. We're just kind of blowing up. Uh -huh. But, like, I just always thought, well, you know, anger is an emotion, and obviously God gave us that. So, like... Now, hold on. That's not very accurate, because what about lust? Well, that, that's what I'm saying, is, like, if we were made in, in God's image... And God gets angry, and God, you know, gets jealous and things like that. But we already talked about his anger not being the same as our right. anger. Right, which, which, what I'm saying is, yeah, our anger is not the same as his anger because we're not perfect like him. Mm -hmm. But before sin came into the world, I mean, we, we really didn't have any reason to get angry. You know what I mean? That's true. Was that corrupted? You know, was that something that was corrupted in us through through sin? Was us getting angry? Oh, are you are you asking or? Yeah. Oh, well, like see. Like an effect of sin. No, see, the Bible never really talks about that. All that it does is we have no examples ever of someone being angry before the fall. Right. Exactly. So because that's not really something. To get angry. Right. But we were made in God's image, and God obviously has, you know, is able to get angry. We were made in His image, but then we we never had a reason to be angry before. But then when sin came into the world and we became corrupted, did all those, you know, was that something that we had the capacity to do 
but we never needed the chat the reason to exercise it because that wasn't a thing until sin came into it. Well, it's important not to push the whole made in God's image too far because we have sex with people. God doesn't have sex with anyone. Yeah. See what I mean? So don't push that too far. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's more talking about – well, we'll talk about it some other time. But um, I'm not sure if that really applies to the anger issue. But once again, um, with the whole um, – it could potentially have been a corruption. That's not really specified, yeah. but we do need to make sure that that when we do get angry, we just kind of – see what I mean? Like if you're angry, best not to say things to people. Right. Well, that's why I'm saying like, like – okay, with Moses, you know, she was talking about righteous anger, and that made, that made a lot of sense. But then Grace is like, well, why did he throw the tablets? Like that was, there was no reason why <laughs> that. He just did it. Well, then as you progressed in explaining it, he didn't just throw the tablets. He went on a whole kind of tirade, like fit throwing. He threw the tablets. He crushed the calf. He threw it in the water. He told him to drink it. Like he just had this all out fit before he went back up, you know? Yeah. And, and so then I kind of real, you know, it, it all kind of. What do you guys think? I totally missed that. What, what, what do you guys think? I want to hear from you. Because I'm not saying I was right. Like that's something that now yeah. I feel like as we've reflected and, and explained, yeah. that that was always a wrong thinking I've had. And, you know, Kyle deals with anger issues. And you know what? I've always told him this before, and now I'm thinking that I'm wrong. It's, it's okay to be angry, but. but quit throwing a fit. You don't call people names. That's mm. not how you deal with anger. Okay. Mm. You know? So and maybe I should not tell be that. telling him it's okay to be angry, but maybe I should say it's not okay to get angry. This is not a reason. Well, what do you guys think? Wow. What, what, That's what, really good. Put, pretend like you are the ones with the autistic child, okay? What do you guys think? Maybe, maybe... Anger is a natural thing. Okay. And maybe just like any other thing that can lead to sin, it should push us to go to God and pray about it instead of our own actions. Oh, okay. That's, a, that's good. That's Anybody like, else? When we get mad, we... I need to pray now. Hmm. See, but then once again, anger is a natural thing. Well, in our fallen bodies, yeah, just like yeah. less is a natural so thing. So it is, it is something in us that, that yeah. is, a, is, is a um something of the fall. It, it it's mm -hmm. it's a consequence or whatever you want to call it of yeah. the sin of the fall. I think this is a very good point. Yeah. This is a very yeah. good point. I think her scripture. Who's I her? Nicole. Okay. I think it kind of addressed that. And other scriptures do too where it says, read it again. And it might have been a different, what are y'all's translations? A fool gives full vent to his anger, but a wise man keeps himself under control. Keeps himself under control. It doesn't say that a wise man doesn't become angry, but he keeps himself under control, which means he recognizes anger. And he says, right, but well, before we push that too far, remember that proverbs are supposed to be uh, short slogans that are generally true. They're not meant to be um, worded in, in a way that completely clarifies things. So yeah. if you're wanting the Bible's a take on something clarified more, you'd have to go somewhere else besides, else proverbs. besides proverbs. Right, right. Yeah. But but I, I do but think that, that that might be – yeah, and as it applies to Kyle, for instance, might be a good, you know, a good thing for, for anger management skills. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and once again, you know, you have the Bible that says take every thought captive and make it obedient to Christ. Wouldn't oh, that also apply to angry oh, thoughts? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. We get angry, but we have to take that thought captive and right. we have to do something. You know, I think yeah. I think Serena might have just made a breakthrough that I didn't even catch on to. What happens when you lust? Right? Okay. Well, you know what got me originally I mean? thinking about this, Michael, was your example uh -oh. of homosexuality. Uh -oh. Homosexuality is sin. If you think about somebody, like somebody of the opposite sex in that way, mm -hmm. but you don't give in to that lust, is it? Ooh, Serena, score! Where's the baseball? I mean, a, a basketball, so we can throw it into that hook. Three points. Hoop. I was like, throw it into a what? Yeah, I was trying so hard to think of what that's called. Anyways, did anybody, did everybody get what Serena just said? Yeah. yeah. Fireworks. Yeah. Breakthrough. Yeah. Awesome, yeah. Serena. No, like that was a breakthrough yeah. for me just now. I was. Well, that's because I've been thinking about wow. it like all week. Yeah. Because I just thought about that and it would kind of be the same. And with my, and this is also reflected on my thoughts of, well, 
and I and I say this, well, anger is an emotion. Didn't God give us those emotions? But then Michael points out lust. Well, lust isn't really an emotion. It's more of a feeling, a desire. We have to, you know, God didn't give us that. So it's like, it's kind of hard to separate all of these things and decide what is right and wrong, you know? Yeah. Oh, never mind. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> it's really funny though. <laughs> no, no, no. You said you said lust isn't an emotion, and I was just thinking as a guy. Wait, it's not. <laughs> see, I, see, that's why I didn't say it out loud. You, you're all judging me now. You're all judging me, except for Ben. Yeah. See, now I pulled him into it because he was quiet. If you would have spoken up, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> I I think that was a great way to end this discussion, Serena. That is that is I I really liked that. I really liked that. I there I don't know. I don't think there's anything else for me to say. I mean, yeah. that really put the put the put the ribbon on it. That pig's ready to be butchered. Put it on out. The the thing that she just said it. about about <coughs> liking it to homosexuality or lust oh, or that kind okay. of stuff, you know, yeah. you're gonna have anger, yeah. and I already mentioned that, but yeah. but I I didn't. I, it was like one of those connected dots where you're looking for number thirty and you're still on twenty nine. You're like, where did he go? <laughs> there it is. Yeah, maybe that's more what those wherever it says be angry. It's not really saying go ahead and get angry. Mm -hmm. Saying you're gonna have anger. Yeah, but when you do, this, do this. yeah, take captive. Yeah. And the best part about this is that Serena doesn't have to say that she was wrong to her child. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you're wrong. Stop it. You're wrong. Stop it. <laughs> I, 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 wow. Don't be angry. No. So okay, I want you guys to pick one of these things. Only uno. Can Christians be wealthy? Or how should Christians treat animals? Or how should Christians deal with the planet? Or is it okay to drink, smoke, do drugs, stuff like that? Oh, so this is Pick one of those things okay. for you to think. Now, here's the rule. You can't pick one that you already know something about. Oh, jeez. <laughs> you have to pick the one that you are most clueless about. Oh, the most oh, clueless. Yes. Okay. The thing uh, I, I know the least about. Yes. Either Christians being wealthy... Christians treating animals a certain way, or um, uh, the, the what is it called? Not not economy. That's that's money. But what is it called here, buddy? Um, someone who's into the planet. What's that called? Um, um, e um, um hippie freak. <laughs> environmental. Yes, environmental. Uh, Christians with environmental issues, or um, about other things like drinking, smoking, doing drugs, that kind of stuff. And the these this is the question of the week, so you just had to pick one. Okay. What I want you guys to do is I want you guys to just take a step back after everything that's been said tonight and just just think about it. Just think about it. You don't have to agree with everything that was said tonight. Or disagree with everything that was said tonight. You don't have to do either of those things. But just think about it. Okay? It will this will be posted on online by tomorrow. Because it'll probably take all night to convert, but once it's converted, and it'll be it'll be online, and just go go listen to it again if you have to, and and just kind of think about it. Like I say, there are some times when I'm still not quite convinced of this. Is that what I mean? And before a pastor came along, I was convinced that anger was fine. But then, you know, a pastor said it a hundred times, and I argued with him. I, went, I even went to his office, and I've argued with him in his office about this three different times. <laughs> Anger is not a sin. Yes, it is a sin. So, you know, this is something that I have been yeah. have been studying for a long time, and I'm still Obviously. not completely... Yeah. I, I mean, Serena said that thing, and it was... So I, I obviously have not thought all that there is to think about this. So just think about it, guys. Just think about it. Did everybody pick a question? Yeah. Okay. And it's the one that you know the least about. Gracie, I didn't see your pen moving. I'm not all for it. I'm not think about it. Oh, Cheating. Wow. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, okay, so next week we'll talk about the bad theology. We'll talk about the environment. We'll talk about uh, animal love or whatever you call it in yeah. all those situations. You know, where, where, where people treat their animals like people. Like, yeah. Oh, like yeah. family members. Now, I'm not judging it yet. 
<laughs> I am. We'll judge it next week. Putting <laughs> dogs and baby buggies and carrying them in their first Okay, let me stop the recording so I can.